Once upon a time in a high school class, a boy lost his fanciful electronic wristwatch and reported to the teacher. And the teacher acted immediately. He asked all the students to face the wall, to raise their hands and to close their eyes while he searched through their pockets. At the end of the search, he found the wristwatch in someone's pocket and returned it to the owner. The students were waiting for this teacher to reveal who the thief was, but he said nothing and continued his lessons. 30 years later, a preacher was at the airport waiting for his connecting flight. When he saw someone he remembered from his high school, a teacher in his 70s, he approached him and greeted him and asked if he could remember him. But the teacher said no. So this preacher said to him, Sir, do you remember one time in your class when someone's wristwatch was missing and you had to search through our pockets? I was the one who stole the wristwatch. Surprisingly, you did not expose me. You did not even say anything to me. Rather, I found in my pocket when you took the wristwatch you left a note and some money, and the note read, Never steal again. Use this money to buy a wristwatch for yourself. Sir, the preacher continued, That event changed my life. I never stole again to this moment. Before I graduated from college, I became an evangelist and a preacher. Responding to this story, the professor laughed and said, I surely do not remember you. I know very well that I found the wristwatch in someone's pocket. But let me tell you what happened. Before searching, I wrote the note and I attached the money. But when I was searching through your pockets, I closed my eyes. And even when I found the wristwatch in someone's pocket halfway during the search, I did not stop. I continued until I searched everyone. What can we call what the teacher did to the high school boy? Simply put, that was mercy. Mercy gives us what we do not really deserve. Welcome to the second Sunday of Easter, also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. The Gospel reading from John chapter 20 from verse 19 to 31 continues the narration of the events of the Easter, reaching out to the Sunday after. Appearing to them eight days after, our Lord Jesus Christ again said to them, Peace be with you. My dear friends, that was a powerful, compassionate prayer and wish. We heard that they were hiding away for fear of the Jews, but the truth is that the Jews were not after them. They were hiding away because of their guilt, the guilt of their disconnection the guilt of their disenchantment, the guilt of their estrangement of the master. All of them ran away, they deserted the Lord and left him at the most vulnerable moment. Consequently, they lacked peace. And Jesus knew quite well they needed peace. And that was why he showed up again to wish them peace. Remember that God will supply all our needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. As we see in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. We are all conversant with the doubt of Thomas, who wanted to see the nail point in the palms of our Lord Jesus Christ and the lens mark by his side. But the truth is that it was not only Thomas that was doubting what was going on. The resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ was an incredible event in the thinking and perception of the apostles. They saw him arrested. They saw him beaten. They saw him hang on the cross. They saw him die just a few days ago, and now we were talking about resurrection. Unbelievable. It was only that Thomas was bold enough to verbalize his doubt, and that is why we still accost him for his doubt up to this moment. My dear friends, the disciples didn't merit the Lord's peace. It was all about divine mercy. Divine mercy is the product of God's compassionate love that grants us the things we do not deserve. In short, Divine mercy overlooks our transgressions, pardons our faults, and blesses us with physical and spiritual benefits, just like we see in the opening story. My dear friends, mercy is a powerful attribute of God. God is not just merciful, 
Pope Francis tells us that God's name is mercy. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 31 says, The Lord your God is a merciful God. And if you read the book of Lamentations chapter 3 from verse 22 to 23, we see where it is written that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases and His mercy never comes to an end. They are new every morning. On the platform of divine mercy, my dear friends, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Word, became one of us like all things except sin, as you see in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. Through the work of divine mercy, God made the sinless one, our Lord Jesus Christ, to become sin for us so that we can become the righteousness of God. It was divine mercy that made our Lord Jesus Christ to go through the passion to suffer and to expire on the cross. In fact, my dear friends, the word that the last time it is finished is a currency of divine mercy. And moving forward, my dear friends, we are challenged to become channels of mercy in our world today. If God our Father is merciful, we cannot afford to be unproductive of mercy. Our world is messy today because of the lack of mercy. Beyond food, shelter, and clothing, our world needs mercy because when mercy shows up, stumbling blocks will become stepping stones and everything will be made aright. My dear friends, we are called to be merciful today because mercy follows those who give mercy as we see in Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. And remember, judgment will be without mercy for those who do not show mercy as we see in James chapter 2, verse 13. With the gift of divine mercy from the Lord, my dear friends, let us go out to transform our world by flaming the embers of mercy. You can start today by letting go the past hurts. Recall that when Jesus rose from the dead, He didn't go back to the past to indict the disciples for deserting Him. Rather, He brought them the gift of peace flowing from His mercy. What do you have to offer to those who hurt you? Remember that our world today will continue to be in a mess if there is no mercy. Let our world begin to glow and radiate with mercy. God bless you. Let us pray. You aspire Jesus, but the source of life gush forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy open out for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which go forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, we trust in you. O blood and water, which go forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, we trust in you. O blood and water, which go forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, we trust in you. Eternal Father, in whom mercy is endless and the treasure of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we may not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Divine Mercy Sunday.